Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're going to be doing some pier fishing today down on the south coast. Had a tip off that there's uh, a lot of fish, mackerel, garfish, and you can see here behind me, yeah, there is indeed a lot of fishermen. Got a nice day for it, and I thought they're all tiny bass here. No, man, you want to see these bass under this pier. A guy called Jimmy runs it. It's just a regular ticket. You can get a ticket down here. And uh, lots and lots of bass there, lots and lots of fishermen. Take a look. And let's take a look at the fish. So guys, you might be able to see the silver of the bass sometimes turned down underneath those stanchions. Just down there. Yeah. I'll hold it very still. Oh yeah, see him breaking right down the edge there, guys. And Jimmy's here who runs it. What are they feeding on, Jimmy? White bait. All white bait? Yeah. I can see him breaking right underneath there. And I can see a, a school of them under there. And right under the ironwork there, guys. I don't know whether you're going to see it with this camera. He's just chasing the white bait up on the surface, are they, Jimmy? Yeah. How long will they last like this? How long will they stay? Like all, all winter or maybe they go de November, December? Uh, I think October they disappear and then uh, feeding going to the shore. And then feeding with a limpet. Yes, yes, yeah, on the shore, yeah. After those bad weather they feed on the shore. Well, actually till it, just waiting for the white bait. If the white bait disappears, they don't come back anymore. Yes. Disappear too. And just this area of the pier, or all, do they go all around? Can they turn up anyway? You know, the, the bass, they don't just sit here. From there to the boat deck. Oh, I see the bass there. Holy. Wow, there's loads of them down there. Hopefully, you people can see them. A lot of a good sized fish, like three pounders, yeah? Yeah. Some of them are six pounds, some of them are shoulders. The, the, the biggest one they are, they are deep under the pier. The bigger fish are deeper, they go yeah. more on live baits, yeah? yeah? A live mackerel, live pouting, something like that. Yeah. They just hide at this chest and waiting for the white bait. When they sure. the white bait coming, they're coming all out. Plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. Yeah, these guys must be able to see those bass. They look like mullet, don't they? But there's a lot of bass down there. Yeah, but they are no mullet. No. You just tried to hide it. Oh, oh right. Chuck him back. Chuck him back. Well, guys, you can see why there's a lot of anglers there. I've seen one small one caught. Oh, I missed it, yeah? <laughs> is that my tackle still there? Yes, it is. And guys, all over there is the mackerel, the mackerel shoals. There we go. Fish on its way, look at that. Good, just on a single feather that was, yeah? Good. Nice fish. Just a feather, yeah? Single feather. Eh? Just a yeah. single feather, no bait, yeah. yeah. That white thing they got, what are those they all use? The them? Many eels. The, 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 like the float thing. What's, what's that all about? A bubble float. Just keep it up on the surface. Oh, that's all it is. Yeah, it seems it's quite more big. It's more disturbing than the surface one, you know? Oh, that's quite a nice fish. You'd think they'd be suicidal when they're like that, wouldn't you? And everybody would be hooked up. Right, so what I've got guys is a piece of sand all there because they're taking like white bait. I've got one barrel weight there. Now everybody seems to be using small lures. Just lowering it down like this. And apparently keep it near the surface.
There's one down there coming over. There we go. Oh no, it's a nice fish, isn't it? Yeah. Good fish down there. Oh, you can see that bass? Snack them out a bit before I bring them up. I'm just having to behave oh, yourself a bit more. One, yeah. You, you like quieting them down a bit first, yeah? Yeah, otherwise, because it's only a fish in a light line, a light if I don't want to shake it off, I'm going to get it out. Mm, got a nice bass here. Big bass. Oh, good joke. Go on, mate. Good one. Good one. Nah, it's probably just undersized. Yeah. Hey guys, chuck it back the, the bus, it's on the side. Yeah. What the fuck are you laughing about? Worth a measure? It's worth a measure. <coughs> Just under, full, about 40 that is. About 40 centimetres. Don't look bad. Let it go, let it grow. Well guys, I've got one on down there, nice bass. I'm really dubious about my hook size though. So. Oh. The size is okay, but if I'm taking this man's advice, let him tire out. If he pings off, I've got plenty of witnesses. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Got him. Well done, guy. Yeah, I thank you for the lure. You are the best. Thank you. you. Are top man. No, you're the top man because you give me the lure. No, I don't there we go, guys, on the pier. Nice bass. Just come up and flashed at it. He hasn't given me the bill for it yet. He's a professional. I'm, I'm paying rental. Him is a legend. Let's get him. The leg, the leg end, some people have said. Legend of the fish. Guys, you got another fish on. Jimmy's going to wind him up for us, Jimmy. It's yours. Yeah, it's not mine. Hey, no, you take wind him up. You bring him up. I'll get you because I know I've got good filming then. Oh. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You can see that little lure there, tiny little lure, just in the top. And that's all they seem to want, it's very, very small. Well, there we go, look. All those hours I spent fishing on the beach, and I could have been down this pier catching bass like this. Let's get him off, get him back. And if you come fishing down here for the bass, just be aware they have got spines. Here, here, here. Get this guy back before he spikes me. There you go. Go on. In again, on black this time. Here's the bass. That looks very, very much like a keeper to me, I would think. So the, th the thing is guys, you've got to tie the fish out first before you swing it up, otherwise it's going to just ping off, I guess. Yeah, it was dangerous to be on there flapping around with this spikes and that one. Here it comes. Yeah, that's got a nice bass. He's in. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's got to be a keeper, isn't it? Close, close to. 42 centimetres is on the uh, top of the masking tape. I'm calling that fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'm that's calling it. that. I'm calling that dinner. That's dinner. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Nice looking fish here. Yeah. I do look nice bass though. Nice. Yeah, silver blue. Right in the top lip. That's a sea bass. He's got another one, yeah. Good man. Oh, it's a chunker. Am I going to get him up? Yeah, it's a good one. Just that colour change made a difference, didn't it? Yeah, I definitely like it a bit more. I bet he's bigger than the other one along. Good idea having that to tape just here. And up. Yes, I, yeah, that? I thought the other one was bigger. I did think the other one was a very good idea. That's a good idea putting this tape just there, piece of tape guys. If you, want, if you are bass fishing all the time, put a piece of tape, you know the exact measurement. 
If the rules change, you can always move your tape up and down. Well, you've got a great big pier area here. You've got this restaurant at the back. You've got your, like, your burger van here as well. Can't fish off the end, apparently, at the moment. Might change rules, might change, I don't know. Pouring through there, the tide. Man, without making good fishing platforms. If not dangerous. Anybody doesn't know, guys? Over there is the Isle of Wight. These are what they call forts over there. We used to be protected in the Second World War. The Solent is a gap between the mainland here, the south of England, and where that uh, looks like the lifeboat or something going out there. So that over there is the Isle of Wight. This is the mainland, Isle of Wight. The Solent's the area in between the land, obviously, and the Isle of Wight. Beyond that, about 15 miles out is where we go shark fishing for thresher sharks. There's another fort over there. And that's the anchorage you might be able to see there before they come into Portsmouth and Southampton. And when I take my boat fishing, I generally go in that sort of area down there. So no boat today, but do we need it? I caught, I've caught more bass than I caught my boat normally, just fishing off the pier. Well, two anyway. I'm going to put the chum bag out in a minute. This is a down tide. So the current's coming this way, and this is the downtrend area, and the guys here don't seem to be catching much at all. One, two, three, four, five. And this was the side I was going to fish. All the bass there, you can see, are on the uptide side. Here, to me, it's very good, but I don't see the bass in there. I'm looking, I don't see them holding up. They're all on the top end of basically the structure. You see all the ironwork there, big tides. And I guess, if I'm going to put my chum bag down, it's coming through the stanchions here, I probably want to put it down here somewhere. And the current goes all the way back down through the solar, might get mackerel, garfish, I don't know. Unknown, but I'll stick with the bass a little bit longer. Not a huge amount being caught. The general next to me obviously sussed out with that black plastic bag, that's working. I think I'll have another go on the bass and then something to eat. Here, guys. Now, what's that one on there, Jimmy? What's that? Just feathers? Yeah, only mackerel feathers. They look like a small white bait. So, no good people come with big feathers. They got to, they got to fish with a small feather. Yeah, to be white bait size because they chase the white bait. Oh. Oh, Yes, I'm there. Don't bother you weren't going to fall off, was he? No. Nah. Good. Nice fish. That's for that lady. Okay. Oh, and that float, is that homemade? Everybody making those? Yeah, well, there's a little polystyrene just to make like a float to make more life. That little feather. Oh, and they the just bottom. tape it up. They just tape it up. Oh, yeah. Piece, piece of uh, insulating pipe, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, polystyrene, okay, yeah. Okay. It's yeah. Uh, Chinese technology. Yeah. Chinese technique. <laughs> they finished catching the bass on the other side, seems to have slowed up a bit, so I've moved to the down tide side of the pier and I'm putting down uh, a chum bag on a colleen crab line and it might just attract some, I don't know, it's got mass, mass fish. It's what we use for shark fishing with thresher shark fishing the other day and it's the last of my uh, shark season tub of stuff, it's only a small tub so it's gone down, I've got it in an onion sack, load it down on the water, just touch the water, don't forget if the tide's falling you have to keep paying slack out, you have to keep paying the line out uh, to allow for the fall in the water, otherwise it's up in the air. But who knows what we catch and as I say, slow down on the other side with the bass and I'm just waiting, hopefully the tide might uh, allow me to get a lead to the bottom and see if I can pick anything else up. On the bottom I've got my second rod, i just got a long flowing trace, a small lead and two small leads there about six, seven feet of uh, 10 pound mono, small hook, and I've got a sand eel split tailed. Just might give it a bit of extra movement. I'm trying it on the bottom because the tide does seem to be easing a bit. And this other one, just so you know, 
they put either a split shot, either a split shot or I've got a small American egg sinker there, you can't buy them in the UK but they're egg sinkers. Swivel, which could have been black in retrospect, I wasn't to know, but it could have been a dark swivel. And that gives you a bit of weight to stop the line blowing around on the surface too much. So it just gives you a bit of stabilisation. Then what? Four or five feet. And then G Jimmy gave me this uh, small lure, like a little sand hill lure. Got a freshwater hook on there. And that's what they did the business for me with the bass. Just skipping it across the surface. And we did find, rather than just holding it static, going backwards and forward across in front of the stanchions, did seem to work. So I've come on this side just to give it a go. I think what I do is going to have a go spinning first in case there's any mackerel around because they might come up in that chum so they can work from there. So the benefit of pier fishing guys is you're basically boat fishing aren't you when you see how far offshore I am. 150, 200 yards offshore so all piers and jetties are the same. I've got a small uh, spinner there. It's not actually a spinner. It's like a wedge, what we call a wedge now but you can see that. I'm going to cast that one out. It's very very small. Just jig it back. Occasionally it'll get uh, mackerel on it don't think the bass will hit it but it's still fishing and I've still got my other rod here just there I've got the drag backed off back there so some of it can pull and I don't lose the rod over the side it's one of those lures that you want to bring back in jigs and you might get mackerel on the downward drop of the lure so I'm going right I'm casting right down the line you can see the line there I'm going right down the line of my chum trail the only downside here is weed, you do get quite a bit of weed. And I've got the drag pretty well, pretty well tight because I've got all underneath here. If you can see all those iron worker stanchions if you do get a fish. I'm hoping anybody gets any big, they've got a drop net. Well guys, I've tried over there. Uh, on the other side on the ebb tide nothing and a guy's packing up and just take a look the tide has died and this is what's happened to the side that was busy general next to me to call the bass is really good he's still here so guys over there to call the rest this whole row along here all along here right empty I've got the whole thing to myself and the reason being the tide's going now the other way i've got the bag down there see the bag we've had a couple of lost garfish and I'm just dragging a sand under a float right down the bottom there. And I've got, on this one here, basically nothing's eating it, but I've got a couple of sections of sand eel on there, small hooks, paternoster on the bottom. It's just amazing, look, this is the same area that when that tide was ripping on the ebb, was absolutely loaded with bass, and now it's loaded with nothing. So it just tells you that you've got to be there when they bite, absolutely, explicitly down here. Ebb tide is the one, I think. But you never know. In the meantime, I've got this on the go. Got the old kettle, got there. You've got to have a cup of tea, my handsome. You cannot beat it, a decent hot cup of tea, because the wind's changed, I've got the jacket on. Just remember to turn that, turn that off, it's going to melt my lead or burn the hairs of my hand. So I've got a decent cup of tea, hot cup of tea made. Brought my water with me. My little bushcraft camp on a pier. Piercraft I'm calling it, piercraft fishing. Got my spork outfit there. This I bought, look, the bread for the mullet I was told was here. But it's too windy, it's not going to happen today. So what a good job that I actually did get those two bass. Well worth seeing, so, look I've never seen this before so it shows your piers, jetties, you've got to work out the tide, speak to the locals, speak to the tackle shops, speak to the guy on the pier, get the information when should you be there, where should you, should you be on the pier, not all of the pier is good. Anyway let's go on with this tea, I think Scott might get one more fish. Okay people I've moved from, look over there, if you can imagine those railings over there were absolutely ran with anglers all gone now but the tide's coming the other way it's flooding from up here from the fault it's coming this way it's not as strong as the ebb but i've come to this corner and had a look around i've already had two small bass 
and there's some down there I think nobody else is fishing you can actually see one bust on the surface then I'm hoping you people can see these they're breaking on the surface in amongst the stanchions on the white bait so the white bait's pushing through again there's stacks so I'm going to take a risk and try and they're not huge fish don't get me wrong they're only relatively I guess school bass but they're breaking on the surface I've had two so I'm on four bass at the moment and I don't think anybody else is on this corner so I'm going to give it a go here they've all gone home but they haven't got the drive I've got Let's see if we can find you guys another one on the pier should be saying appearing soon the bass appear did you get it? appearing soon don't know why I bother with I've cut some up there and I'm going to try and throw some of these into the swim as well I've no idea where they're going to take them but they're certainly going to get them anyways so I'll have to walk along here I've lost the shoulder again don't think they're going to be in a shallow water but you never know got to check everything out when you're pier fishing all a learning game it's very shallow I don't see the bottom down there in fact I think I can see the bottom but I do not see any bass I don't think they're going to be on the bottom side as you can see from what it was guys Pretty well deserted. Check this out. Checking, checking, checking. Where are these bats? Good old structure over there. I suppose there's congas laying around that one. I just don't see them. Well, guys, it's absolutely howling. Look if I turn this way. No doubt. You'll hear it in the mic. I got rid of my chum. One of the other guys came and he said, go and fish off the point, which is just a point over there. And he said, when it's dead water like this, you can see everybody else has gone home, there's no fish about. But he said, they come here and get their live bait there, so I might be able to get a pout or something like that. So I'm just going to go down with a bit of bait and see, you know, if I just fish the last half hour. I'm only going to sit in a traffic queue for sure. Let's go and have a look at it. Oh, I see. They call it the alleyway along here, I guess. There. Between the two, let's have a drop down. Out of the wind. Probably straight into a snag now, me. Guys, the man does not speak with forked tongue. I've just had a bite, it's been down 10 seconds. And might need smaller hooks. And there we go. Yeah. Just a small one there, guys. Yeah. I guess that's the size I use for the bass as well, for getting the bigger bass. Yeah. Uh, just scaled my hooks down, used a smaller bit of bait, and got a little pout in. I'm probably going to wish I kept him for bait later on. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't float a while, I'll keep the next couple. Yeah, they're straight on it. Straight on it. Just drop the hook size, guys. Get that hook size down. There you go, look, straight away. That shows you. You can get your uh, pouting, and I think the guy called it pouting alley or something he called it here. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect bait for big bass. So all I've got there is two hook pattern I still like that lead at the bottom and I'm going down not very deep there actually doesn't seem very deep but that hook size was doing it ah oh, that's the iron work <laughs> I thought I was I thought I was being lucky then down we go guys four a proper live bait now probably I'm rigged up now for bigger bass I probably won't catch my live bait now and I've dropped a one hook not two 
and there's the bite. Missed him. I've just got on there a nut and I've actually got my live bait which I want to get out quickly. There's my live bait. I've got to unhook him quickly and put him on. <gasps> Nearly lost him. Nick him through the back and I'm going to drop him over this corner very quickly. As they say, this is the one. That's the bait there. Can I see him? Let's try and drop it. Just down there. And it's got a lead on there as well, which I'm going to Gonna low him. Oh Jesus, is that a bass I'm looking at? Or is that a piece of weed? Must be a piece of weed. Yeah, piece of weed, holy cow, it's about a 42 pound bass and it's a chunk of weed. Oh my god. Oh my god, hang on, hang on, hang on. The pouting's getting bumped. Oh the pouting is swimming guys. You won't see it down there. There's loads of bits of ironwork I can now see under there, which is also not good. Might have to move around this corner. I'm going to keep an eye on my gear as well. Oh, it really is low tide now. Well, oh, guys, it's uh, it's getting late now. The night shift's come back on. The guys coming back over there. Tide is flooding. I've had loads of pouting, loads of pouting there. So I've had four bass and um, I think I'm going to call it quits. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Watch out for the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. Free download of your awesome angler. It's free, free, free all the way you go. And for me, you can see, great setting. I've enjoyed it. Get down on those piers, on those jetties, on those quaysides, howling wind, and you've got a setting like that, and as well as a setting like that, hopefully you guys can catch a few fish. We'll see you again next time.